I want to introduce Kelly Morrison. She's a director in technology transformation at Grant Thornton Public Sector. I also know her from her time in government when she worked at USAID and OMB. And, and we both have volunteered within ACT IAC and participate in the ACT IAC community. So Kelly, thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Always good to talk with you. So Kelly, for those who haven't met you or had a chance to get to know you like I have, talk a bit about where you're from, who you are and what you do. Sure, I am a Michigan girl through and through. Um, and for those that don't know about Michigan girls, we are pretty capable of doing anything, um, getting dressed up and going out, having fun on four wheelers, sailing, um, you name it. So I, I'm up for anything. And um, I moved to the DC area in 2003 after graduating. And DC was a uh, compromised location for my now husband, fiance at the time, and I. And we really planned to be in this area for about three to five years before heading back to Michigan. He also is from. And now- <laughs> You're still here. Uh, 19 years later, <laughs> we are still here. <laughs> Interesting. So, so which Michigan school did you go to? Is there one, only one that counts as Michigan? No, definitely not. So I grew up in the Richland area, which is Southwest Michigan. Um, I went away to school initially to University of Massachusetts in Amherst and um, ended up transferring to Western Michigan University. It was when I really realized the, um, my intuition and listening to my intuition. I had no idea why I was transferring. And at the time we had fax machines. So I went to the admissions office at UMass and had to fax my transcripts to Western and get a phone call that I was accepted. And I had no idea why I was transferring. I loved the program that I was in. I had some really fun internships set up. I was on the cheerleading team and we were going to compete in nationals in just a couple of months. And it was the most bizarre feeling, but I, I knew that I needed to transfer home. And a few days after, I got home, I was in the hospital, had an emergency appendectomy, and um, it was just that validation that I had that inner knowing and um, has taught me to continue to listen uh, when that intuition is speaking. And so finished my undergrad and graduate studies at Western Michigan University. Wow, and where did you get those in? My undergrad, I did a double major in international comparative politics and French. And my master's was in, it was a dual degree between the political science department and the public administrations department. Um, and they call it the master's for public admin, no, development administration. Oh, interesting. So international development and public administration. Wow, then that makes me even more curious why we have never crossed paths before we did because that you know the agency I work at that's all we do is is that uh, international aid yes I love MCC so then how did that how did that uh that transfer to DC happen I mean what was the in what was it that brought you into the DC area <laughs> well I had just gotten back from um Senegal West Africa where I did a research project and um, was there for you know, six or eight weeks. Um, it was a wonderful program and I was ready to move back. And my now husband had proposed to me and we agreed that we wanted to move somewhere. And I was rooting for West Africa. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he told me that he reminded me rather that he was still in grad school and his focus and concentration was local government. And I said, well, there's absolutely local government in Africa. <laughs> um, 
and I didn't win. So DC was the compromise where I could pursue my interests in international development and he could continue his um, graduate program and uh, work in, in local government, which he's doing. He works for Arlington County and um, has loved his career there. And while I had applied to a number of different programs and was a finalist when the, the young, young, uh, I don't remember, young, maybe young professionals within the, the World Bank and IMF, and I applied to a number of things, didn't um, get accepted for those positions and um, was already had a job somewhere else, which I'll explain how that transferred to, to where I've landed now. Um, but just never until working at USAID never got back into the mix of international, even though I did some volunteer work, um, never professionally was in that space, uh, until working at USAID a couple of years ago. Wow. So, so is that just, um, happenstance and I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I know, I know how it works, right? You graduate and you, you got to get a job, right? That's the next chance transition and the, the challenge. Did, so did you go directly into government work or did you do something before that? So I, um, I was very involved with a youth leadership program um, from high school till the time that I moved here to DC. And it was, it's called the Hugh O'Brien Youth Leadership Organization. And um, through that organization, I was introduced to a company which will re remain nameless um, in the DC area. And I accepted a position over the phone with a company that I ended up not having a lot of respect for and ended up quitting that job without having another job. And this is where all of the magic stones laid the path <laughs> to where I am now. Um, one of my coworkers at that company just happened to be roommates with one of my good friends growing up in Michigan. And so we got to know each other and she knew that I was in, that I had a lot of experience in project management and said, you know, my mom is looking for a strong project manager. Would you be interested? And this was before I decided to quit my job without having another job. <laughs> um, and thankfully, I got a call from someone in her mom's office af just after I quit my job, not having another job and wanting to just stay in bed, um, <laughs> feeling so bummed out and not sure how I was going to pay my rent. <laughs> um, and... So I, I joined a small, at the time, small company called Human Touch Consulting that was supporting Food and Drug Administration and later was hired on. And this was an, an IT organization, CIO's organization. Um, when I graduated, I knew that my two weaknesses were managing a budget and IT. <laughs> and so when I took this job, I said, project management, no problem. It doesn't matter if it's IT, doesn't matter whatever it is. A few months after I took the job and was serving as a, as a PM for one of the projects, the person that managed the budget went out on maternity leave and the person that managed the capital planning process moved and left the agency. And those were handed to me. And I love a challenge. Again, my Michigan roots, <laughs> I will jump. And I did, I, I had spreadsheets all over the floor. I was working nights and weekends. And I told my boss at the time, I really don't know that you wanna trust me with this. I'm not a rock star at managing my own checkbook, which is, quite different than the budget here at the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research. So be warned that I might suck at this. 
(laughs) (laughs) And it was the best opportunity that I've been given to jump in, prove to myself and the organization that it's something that I could excel in. And through that, um, ended up taking the lead capital planning position at Food and Drug Administration, then over to Department of the Interior, was recruited over to OMB to help lead a reform effort around capital planning, investment control, where I introduced technology business management into the way that we, we budget for the federal government. And um, I've learned so much in the areas that I knew I had, that I was weakest in and wanted mm-hmm. to develop the skill sets. Wow, that, that, is, that is amazing. Uh, and, and, and it's yeah. also very, it, it's, it's, not, it's something that people should keep in mind, right? There are opportunities that present themselves, even if you don't feel you're up to the, the challenge, those is, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't automatically eliminate yourself from that, right? Sure, but I think what you did was very wise, right? Say, hey, this may go south quick, so you better watch. But it didn't. That's amazing. And so then because of that, I mean, now you're now you're like the TBM voice of reason and expertise um, since since you stood it up for OMB. I mean, that's that's where I know you from, from your work at OMB and and how that has dramatically impacted how government does it. And so that that's that's fantastic. I mean, we never would have had that if those things had not aligned for you. So true. Those magic stones and the people that come in our paths and have a huge impact. Um, I will forever be grateful that someone saw something in me that I didn't see in myself and gave me an opportunity. And I think it's a, a wonderful reminder for me personally, but I think all of us to remember that if we can instill confidence in someone else and help them see that that someone believes in them that they really can exceed our expectations I don't think that um, that my boss at that time had any idea that I might you know join other agencies and continue down the path of improving maturing et cetera, these processes, um, but, but she definitely had a huge impact on my trajectory. Wow. So, so throughout this career, I mean, you've, you've been a few places, both in uh, the, the private sector and the public sector. What's, what, what's something you've witnessed that you think um, we should con- reconsider? So, you know, if somebody came to you, Kelly, and said, Kelly, today you get to make a decision for us to evaluate a change we should implement. Um, what's a change you would recommend based on what, what you've seen throughout your career? So there, there are two things that really relate to each other. One is uh, changing the compliance mindset that we so often fall into and instead embracing a critical thinking mindset. And the other, again, closely related is so often I see really important initiatives that have a ton of promise and opportunity to make things better. And we abandon them too quickly Mm. before we realize the value potential. And unfortunately, kick the can down the road another decade or two without really fixing what needs to be fixed and addressed. I, I, yeah, I could not agree with you more. I could not agree with you more. I mean, do you think that is a, uh, is that, is that just something in government that we're so risk averse sometimes? Is that, or, or, or what, what do you think will keep us from taking those, taking those chances on something? I mean, I'm not asking you to solve your change, but certainly it's an interesting topic. You know, I, um, I've thought so much about how I wish As much as I loved political science, international development, et cetera, I really wish that I would have spent more more time taking psychology courses (laughs) to understand better how we as humans 
think and process and, and what motivates us. And um, I think that the answer is somewhere in there so with, with people that are much more knowledgeable about how humans function. Um, I do think that there's a level of bureau intentional bureaucracy that was incorporated into government and that definitely plays a role. Um, I, I think that there's also just natural resistance to change, um, the fear of the unknown. It takes more energy and effort to change rather than to stay the same, even if the same isn't great and we don't like it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I do think it's a, a few different things and I really wish that I had the special sauce to figure <laughs> out how to, how to adjust. Yeah, those the really good changes are the ones that will take a lot of work and effort and the right people to figure it out. But I, I do I do agree with you. I think that's, that's something we certainly should consider. So so where are things heading for Kelly? I mean, what or, or, or where do you see this TBM going in the practice that you're doing and you've, you, you're, you're, you're leading at um, Grant Thornton? Where, where are you headed? What's in the near future for you and, and for this practice? Well, when I left um, USAID, I joined Grant Thornton because I saw the some turnover in the, the office of the federal CIO and the succession plan and what the roadmap that we had laid for CPIC reform and TBM. I knew that the people that were there to carry it on and con continue pursuing that were leaving. And therefore, there was an opportunity, especially knowing that it was a, uh, an election year, there was a chance or probability that the TBM initiative could die on the vine. And I, I thought a lot about how much that mattered to me. I had, I had left that position. I intentionally went to aid to pursue the, the passion and interest that I've had in international development. And I was, you know, I was intentionally making that shift. Um, and so it was a gut decision for me where I just, again, trusting my intuition, it felt right to be able to get back into the mix and do something where I could have hopefully a positive impact. Uh, and so I thought about where that could be. Do I go back to OMB? Do I go to GAO or to the Hill or to an agency where there's agency senior leadership support for TBM and we could create a flagship program that could be replicated across other agencies and ultimately decided that I thought I could have more influence and impact beyond the private sector side. That's not something that I would have thought about had I not worked at OMB and seen the way in which and the role that industry can play in partnering with, supporting, moving initiatives forward, and helping to advocate for good for government mm -hmm. initiatives. Um, and Grant Thornton is a firm that was doing some incredible work with a few different agencies. While there are other firms that are doing great work as well, I loved the breadth that Grant Thornton has where we're offering services, not just to federal, but to state, local governments, higher ed, commercial. There was an opportunity and I have the opportunity to touch all of those. There's also an opportunity to work and collaborate with the Grant Thornton affiliates globally. And I really wanted that it was important to me to be somewhere where there was that breadth and reach because I think any there are new initiatives that we're working to embrace and implement. It's important to see other like organizations doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So the more states, local governments, other countries, et cetera, that are doing it 
finding successes, finding challenges and figuring out how to overcome those challenges. All of that can be shared to help advance the greater good. Um, so I'm thrilled to be at Grant Thornton. I'm loving it. Um, I'm loving the opportunity to lead a solution area to directly support a number of different clients, both in and around CPIC and TBM, as well as other projects touching technology transformation. Um, and I, I don't, you know, I, because it was a gut decision to leave USAID and, and come to Grant Thornton, I didn't have a strategic next step plan. Uh, <laughs> And I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I'm enjoying it. So I do still think that I'm going back to government at some point. I don't know if that's going to be on the career side or the political side. Um, but I am a public servant through and through. And that's why I continue doing what, what I'm doing. I want to help. I want to be that good steward of taxpayer dollars and help agencies to address the challenges that have existed for three decades yeah. and that are going to continue unless we continue to do the hard work to embrace new initiatives and not let those die on the vine. Wow. Well, Kelly, that is a great goal. And I can't wait to see what you do in this space. The, the things you've brought already have significantly changed the people who have adopted them and have a have opportunities to do the same. And I really, I, I get it, you know, being at Grant Thornton, you have an opportunity to have that, that uh, more broader appeal. So thank you for coming on the podcast today. It's been a great conversation and I, I love getting together with you and we'll do it anytime we can. So uh, thanks for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks so much. See you soon.